It's Now Again. Welcome to It's Now Again, a podcast where we explore mindfulness practices from a secular evidence-based perspective. I'm your host, Jeremy West, and today we're diving into a topic that's particularly relevant in our modern, fast-paced lives, technology. We live in a world that's more connected than ever, but with this connectivity comes new challenges, especially when it comes to maintaining mindfulness. Today, we'll explore how to find balance in a digital world and how to use technology in a way that supports rather than hinders our mindfulness practice. Let's get started. Technology is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it connects us with people across the globe, gives us access to limitless information, and can even support our mindfulness practice through apps, guided meditations, and online communities. On the other hand, it can also lead us to constant distractions, a sense of overwhelm, and a feeling of being perpetually on. The challenge we face is not about rejecting technology altogether, but about finding a balance that allows us to use it mindfully rather than letting it control our lives. Let's be honest. Most of us spend a significant portion of our day in front of screens, whether it's our smartphones, computers, or televisions. While technology itself isn't inherently bad, the way we use it often leads to a fragmented mind. We're constantly bombarded with notifications, emails, and social media updates, which can pull us out of the present moment and into a state of distraction and stress. Mindfulness teaches us to be fully present in whatever we're doing, but technology often encourages the opposite, multitasking, mindless scrolling, and a constant craving for the next piece of information or entertainment. This can lead to feelings of anxiety, burnout, and a sense of disconnection from the world around us. To illustrate the importance of maintaining balance and not allowing distractions to take over our lives, I'd like to share a Taoist parable known as the Parable of the Empty Boat. One day, a man was rowing his boat upstream. As he rowed, he saw another boat coming down the river toward him. At first, he thought nothing of it, but as the boat got closer, he realized it was on a direct collision course with his own. The man waved his arms and shouted, but the boat didn't change course. Finally, in anger and frustration, he prepared to confront the person in the other boat. But as the boats collided, the man realized something surprising. The other boat was empty. There was no one to confront, no one to blame. The man, and the man was left alone with his own anger, which had no external cause. The lesson of this parable is that much of our suffering comes not from external circumstances, but from our own reactions. The empty boat represents the distractions and irritations of daily life, including those brought on by technology. If we allow these distractions to control us, we can easily become overwhelmed and lose our sense of balance. But if we approach these distractions with mindfulness, recognizing them for what they are and choosing how to respond, we can maintain our peace and presence. Here are some practical strategies to help you use technology in a way that supports your mindfulness practice. Create specific times in your day when you disconnect from technology. For example, you might decide to avoid checking your phone during meals or to set a specific time in the evening when you stop using screens altogether. Setting these boundaries can help you reclaim your time and reduce the constant pull of notifications. The second thing to do is to practice single tasking. Instead of multitasking, focus on one task at a time. If you're checking emails, just check emails. If you're watching a video, just watch the video. Single tasking can help you stay present and reduce the mental clutter that comes from trying to do too many things at once. A third tip is mindful breaks. If you're working on a computer for long periods, take regular mindful breaks. Step away from the screen, take a few deep breaths, and reconnect with your body and surroundings. This can help prevent burnout and keep your mind clear. Number four, curate your digital environment. Be intentional about the content you consume. Follow accounts that uplift and inspire you and unfollow or mute those that cause stress or negativity. Curating your digital environment can help you create a more positive and mindful online experience. Number five, use mindfulness apps wisely. Mindfulness apps can be a great tool, but it's important to use them with intention. Set aside specific times for guided meditations or mindfulness exercises rather than using the app as just another distraction. Remember, the goal is to enhance your mindfulness practice, not to add more noise to your life. 
While it's important to set boundaries, it's equally important to acknowledge the positive role that technology can play in our lives. Used mindfully, technology can enhance our mindfulness practice rather than detract from it. For example, online mindfulness communities can provide support and encouragement, meditation apps can offer guidance, and virtual events can connect us with like-minded individuals around the world. The key is to approach technology with intention. Ask yourself, how many more ways can I continue to use technology mindfully even more? By setting this intention, you can make conscious choices about how and when you use technology, ensuring that it serves your well-being rather than undermines it. Thank you for joining me on this episode of It's Now Again. I hope you found some valuable insights into how to navigate our digital world with mindfulness. Remember, technology is a tool. It's up to us how we use it. By approaching it mindfully, we can create a more balanced, peaceful, and fulfilling life. If you're interested in going deeper into your mindfulness practice or need personalized guidance, I offer one-on-one strategy sessions for free where we can explore these topics together and tailor the practice to your unique needs. Visit jeremywest.net for more information. And while you're at jeremywest.net, you can also check out my new Pay What You Want Patreon, where you'll find a growing library of mindfulness practices, including guided meditations. Until next time, keep practicing, keep growing, and remember, it's now again...